Cruise and Blast was released onto whatever remaining video arcade establishments or equivalent amusement centers in 2017, courtesy of Raw Thrills, a company headed by Eugene Jarvis, a man responsible for many classic arcade titles, Defender, Stargate, Robotron, Smash TV, NARC, and the old Cruisin' series of arcade racers that eventually graced the Nintendo 64. It took a while, but eventually Cruisin' Blast made its way over to Nintendo Switch in 2021, and I'll be honest, this is a completely new thing for me because I've never played the arcade Cruisin' Blast game, which is notable because with the older Cruisin' games, I could at least say I've played the actual arcade machines and thus have some basis of comparison when it came to playing the home ports. But I'm heading into this without having touched the arcade original. So anyone wondering how this Nintendo Switch port compares to the Cruisin' Blast arcade machine, I'm afraid I can't help you there. I know this is an expanded edition where they added more stuff into it like new tracks and cars, but that's about all I could tell you on that front. I can tell you this however, Cruisin' Blast certainly lives up to its name and I certainly had a blast with it. It's an arcade racer, so it plays very loosely with physics and any basis of reality you want to pull out of your ass. The old Cruisin' games had some kooky moments here and there, especially Cruisin' Exotica which gave you some rather exotic locations, shall we say? But Blast just goes all out on the ridiculousness and runs with it. Not just in terms of the physics and the opportunities you get for pulling off stunts and shit, but also the tracks are really off the wall bonkers. Long jumps over expanding chasms and going through walls of flames, stuff like that just overloads the senses and the loops and stuff. In terms of the actual racing, you pick a car, you race through the tracks, and since this isn't an arcade game, even though it's based on one, there's no timer counting down the seconds you have to finish the race, or nor are there any checkpoints to be found. You just drive through the track and you reach the finish. Ideally coming in first, but whatever. Like I said, physics take a backseat, and there's more emphasis on spectacle. So you could do wheelies and airborne stunts, drifting to fill a drift meter that could give you a short boost to speed, drive past speed ramps to send you soaring into the air at fast speeds, and if you want a more controlled means of getting a quick burst of speed, there's the ever-present nitrous option. Control in Cruisin' and Blast is actually not that bad. It's smooth, it's responsive, and despite the zaniness of cars bouncing all over the place with all the insane speed and bumps, it never did feel too slippery. Common ailment I had with the old N64 ports is that sometimes the cars would handle a bit too loosely, and here, while it's not the firmest grip because there's a drifting to be done here and there, I felt I had more control over my vehicle than in the older games, so that's a bit of a step up. But Cruisin' Blast isn't just about racing to the finish. You also have secondary goals of sorts that comes in the form of collecting keys and stashes of money laying along the track. Money should be self-explanatory. You use it to buy upgrades for your car and it's earned by finishing races and doing all sorts of kooky things. Earning upgrades that you could buy is done by winning races and finishing races and earning experience points and leveling up and that sort of thing. Keys, on the other hand, are used to unlock vehicles and Cruise and Blast sports about a dozen or so vehicles just waiting to be unlocked. And the more keys you collect, the more zanier the automotive selection you can unlock. There's a couple of modes of play in Cruise and Blast, the main mode where you race and unlock tours of four tracks of peace, which in turn gives you more tracks to play in other modes. Classic Arcade, which is basically the arcade game at home, theoretically. I'm not sure, I've never played the arcade game, like I said. Time Trial, which is pretty self-explanatory, and a single race for any of the tracks you've unlocked thus far. There's also local multiplayer for up to four players via split screen, but no online multiplayer, strangely enough, which, okay, personally, never really gave a shit about online multiplayer, that's not my thing. But it does strike me as odd that this would not be a feature in a game that would have strived on that sort of thing. It's a crazy party game, which the local play is fun for a lark, but I'd imagine more people would rather do the online thing, and for that not to be an option here, I'll admit I was surprised by that. Again, not something I'm personally interested in, but it might be worth something to you folks and that's why I brought it up. So visually, Cruisin' Blast goes balls to the walls with its atmosphere, its track design, the stuff that happens within, and it looks really, really slick. An explosion of colors whenever you activate the nitrous or drift or whatever, just the general speed of things moving along, the track designs looking visually splendid and imaginative, and the cars, uh, not necessarily the greatest looking things in this game, but 
They resemble the cars they're supposed to resemble, and they're supposed to depict these cars or whatever, so... If you recognize the cars, that's what the cars are supposed to look like, and the... Well, you know, I don't want to spoil anything, but... Sometimes, however, the action will chug a bit, and there might be the occasional stuttering and frame rate, but it doesn't really kill the overall experience, and on a whole, it's a rather colorful looking game. Cruise and Blast sports a variety of tunes that you could cycle through during gameplay whenever you can actually hear them over the audible chaos. I'm sure there's volume controls you could adjust, I haven't really checked to be honest, nor do I really want to because that would kill the mood. But the tracks in the game are highly energetic, banging tunes that fit the zaniness of the racing, and the sound effects are alright, loud booming engine noises and explosions and stuff, there's some vocal bits in there. The theme song that plays during menus and stuff is alright. No complaints, really. It's fine. Overall, Cruisin' Blast, no pun intended, is a raw thrill ride that is just insane in its presentation, its gameplay, and just all around atmosphere that makes it fun and exciting. If your only experience with Cruisin' were the old N64 conversions, this naturally blows those games out of the water. And while it's pretty much night and day to compare the two, the spirit of those older games, the old cruising games from back in the day, are accentuated here by a wide margin. There might be some hiccups in performance at times, and the lack of online multiplayer might be a turnoff for some folks, but if you just want a fun, crazy arcade racer with stunts and sensory overload, Cruisin' Blast will more than satisfy that itch. It is a fantastic thrill that I enjoyed immensely, and is definitely one worth checking out.